Hi, I'm Michael and welcome to The Journey. Today we're going to be talking about safe essential oils for your pets. We're talking about a holistic approach to your pet's health. So today we're going to be breaking this down with Dr. Katie Woodley and figuring out what oils you can use and what oils you can't, what are toxic and what are not. Stay tuned. Well, hello, everybody. Welcome to Safe Essential Oils for Your Pet. We're in the holistic world with Dr. Katie Woodley. She's a veterinarian and a holistic vet out in Denver. Not Denver. I always want to say Denver, but in Colorado. And she works with her clients in just treating her animals holistically because there are other options than just pharmaceuticals. And today we're going to be breaking down essential oils. What are essential oils? What do they do? How do they work? When do we use them? When don't we use them? And are there some that are toxic? So we're going to be breaking that down. Before I get going, I would love for Dr. Katie to say hello to the room and welcome to the room. Dr. Katie. Thanks, Michael. As Michael mentioned, I'm Dr. Katie Woodley, the natural pet doctor. I'm based in northern Colorado, so close to Denver, but Fort Collins, Colorado. And I, my business is focused solely on holistic medicine, so helping your pets with real whole food species appropriate nutrition plans. Essential oils is a huge part of my practice, which I'm so excited to talk about, alongside herbal medicine and acupuncture. We also offer telehealth consultations for pet parents worldwide alongside in-house consultations in Northern Colorado. So I'm super excited for everyone to be joining us because I know this is a controversial topic. A lot of pet parents are like, why are we giving essential oils to our pets? I thought it, it harms them. And I'm gonna be here to tell you today that we can use them in a very powerful way to help treat a lot of different types of conditions. So let's start at the top. What are essential oils? But what exactly are they? So they're defined as the aromatic volatile liquid that's actually distilled. So taken from shrubs, flowers, trees, roots, bushes, and seeds. And so what, what we have is something that is very concentrated. And this is where a lot of times people go wrong. We're used to giving more and more. Something's working. Let's give a little bit more. That's why we should give more. It's working. So give more. But with essential oils, because they're so concentrated, when we give more, we can actually cause issues. So they're very potent. They're a lot more potent than dried herbs um, or teas, which we've talked about in the past. Now, here's the other thing is where, where are those essential oils being distilled from? Are they actually coming from a plant or are they being manufactured and synthetically made? So a lot of essential oils on the market are not the actual true liquid from a tree, from the flower, from the root, and they're being synthetically made. And so we have a lot of adulterants that are present. So lavender is one of the most known synthetic essential oils out there. It's fake. It's an artificial fragrance. It's made for the, the, per, the perfume industry. And if we were to use that on our pets, we've got these chemicals now versus the actual real plant components. And that's what leads to harm. That's what leads to side effects. So cats specifically, we see a lot of cases where a pet parent will use, say, like your tea tree oil and the cat has seizures. And they're like, nope, tea tree oil is toxic. However, you can use tea tree oil when you use it appropriately. When you're using the real essential oil in the right therapeutic dosage, I do it every day. And I've diffused essential oils around my cats for years and have never had an issue. And so it's when we use them appropriately and we're using the right essential oil from the right companies doing the right thing, that is the most important thing that we have to remember about essential oils. So more is not better, making sure we're using right companies, right amounts. So how do we find because like you're saying some are synthetic and some are you know they come from the roots they come from stems they come from bark seeds and all that is there a way that we can actually know that they're real oils versus synthetics yeah this is a great question and be really hard and as i mentioned so not all essential oils are created equal the problem is is that there's no industry standard it's kind of similar to a lot of things right like cbd is very similar there's not an industry-wide standard there's ways that people should be doing things now, we have to look at the company. How transparent are they? Are they willing to say where they're sourcing from? Do they know the suppliers? 
do they know how the plants were grown? Are they testing the product? Are they, can they provide you with what's called a certificate of analysis? Are they testing that product for microbial contamination afterwards? Are they testing for the different terpenes that are part of that plant that make up that therapeutic component of the plant? And can they actually show us that information? If the company will not show you that information, you have to be very careful because the thing is, is that anyone and anyone can make these and they can make very poor quality ones and sell them at a high price saying that they're really good and you may never know. So that's where you have to do a little bit more digging to find, okay, well, what is this company doing? How are they producing? What are their testing procedures? Are they testing each batch or are they only testing like once every few months and they're saying that all the batches are good? A good quality company is going to want to know what each individual bottle is doing because if there's ever a recall or there's a bacterial contamination, they need to be able to track that back to what batch was made, what was used. Um, so those are some of the really important things to look at for those companies. Now, I tend to go with once I find good companies, of course, you have to make sure they don't change ownership and change the way that they're doing things. But I tend to kind of go to a couple main companies that I feel comfortable with. One of the ones in the States that I feel very comfortable with is Animal EO. So that's Dr. Melissa Shelton. She's a veterinarian that actually created her own essential oil company because she wanted to know that things were being produced the right way. She wanted to know the source of where her the plants are coming from, what are the quality of the soil. And she does all the testing. So she's able to control every step along the way. And she's never had an adverse reaction to any of her essential oils. And she uses them in birds. She uses them on amphibians. Like this is how crazy it is. Birds and like amphibians are super sensitive to essential oils. And Dr. Melissa Shelton, she has an aviary where she actually tests her products and she knows that they're super safe and we can use them effectively. And you can go there and there's lots of information. So that's one company that I always refer people who, especially if you're like not certain about essential oils, you're a little bit weary, go there first, use her products. They're already, you can get neat products where you can apply it neat, which means it's not diluted. And she tells you how to dilute it, or you can also get diluted products already where she tells you how to use them. So that's a great starting place for a beginner in essential oils. And I love that you shared that because I think that's one of our biggest things is like you mentioned, like ask the company if they're third party tested. Sometimes we don't have time. We rush around our lives so quickly and we don't have time to really dig into it. So to have these resources that we, you feel safe with, that we feel safe with, that we can go to makes it so much more easier for us because we are like grab and go community. Um, where do we go from here? We've talked about essential oils, potentially where we can get them from. Where, where do you want to take the conversation, Doc Katie? You know, I think the biggest thing is why, why would we even reach for essential oils, right? We've got all these other options. We've got all these drugs that do all sorts of different things. And so why do I usually incorporate essential oils into almost every single treatment plan that I'm creating for dogs and for cats? And I know we're talking about dogs, but we, I know a lot of people here have cats too, mm -hmm. so I want to touch a little on that. And the thing is, is that most pet parents, especially if you're here and you're looking more into like a holistic side, you're like, I don't want to use antibiotics potentially. I don't want to have to use pain medications or I want to limit the amount that I need to use. And I find, especially with, I treat a lot of allergy patients. I treat a lot of pain. I treat a lot of cancer. I treat a lot of GI disease. Those would kind of encompass the majority of my patients. And when we use essential oils, a lot of times we don't have to use drugs. So specifically for allergies, say your pet is chewing their feet raw, they've got a hot spot, they're getting an ear infection, we can use essential oils topically, we can diffuse them also in a water diffuser in an open room. And because we're using the whole plant, that's what the essential oil is, remember it's a distilled product from the plant, we're getting these synergistic properties of that plant that work together that actually achieve a greater effect than say an antibiotic can. So we're getting an antibacterial effect. We're getting an anti-inflammatory effect. We're getting an anti-anxiety property also all from one single oil. So like lavender is a great example of that. 
where I can use it for one of my go-tos for allergies. And we can create a dilution. So, and I'll, I'll go through some of the safe dilutions where you can start with. And you can apply that topically to an irritated skin and using a carrier oil. So something like a fractionated coconut oil that has some antifungal properties too. And that's going to treat the skin infection. And so you can use this alongside conventional medications too. So I'm not saying you have to do one or the other, but a lot of times my patients can avoid having to use drugs. So specifically like antibiotics, why do we want to avoid them? Because we talk about microbiome a lot. The gut health is so important for the overall health of our pet. And anytime we give antibiotics, we're going to take out the microbiome. We're going to upset that balance. And then we kind of have to start back from zero, rebuilding that gut health. And we're treating a skin infection that's probably directly related to the gut health in the first place. So that's where using essential oils, looking at, okay, antiviral, helping to support the immune system, support for antibacterial properties to help with anxiety. We've got fireworks coming up. I don't know if anyone else is worried about that. I know my mm. cats are going to freak out. And so that's where being able to diffuse essential oils use them alongside other natural remedies, I know that I can help support my pet versus having to give them something like Prozac. So there's a lot of different uses for them, which are really, really powerful. And I look at them as a way to limit the amount of drugs that we necessarily need to give that can lead to those adverse side effects that so many pet parents are worried about. Well, you, you know, the first thing I have to say is you said fireworks and yes, fireworks are coming up and anxiety is a big thing. We're seeing so many people go purchase our no more drama right now. And it's, it's because the fireworks and animals do get freaked out. But I'm lo I love the fact that there's all these different oils and that you can do it. One of my questions, I know I'm going to get off subject really quick because I want to, don't want to lose this question. A lot of people like when you're talking about lavender or let's say you're talking about peppermint, a lot of people may have that growing in their garden. And they may be thinking, can I just pick it and use it from my garden? Is there a way I can do that? Have you ever done anything like that? Totally. So when we think about it, essential oils are taken from the plant. And so they're going to be a more diluted form. So we can actually use a higher concentration. So I love using teas. I talk about teas all the time. I just love using teas for everything. And it's, we can take the peppermint out of your garden. You can make a tea from that. And you can apply that onto hot skin. It's going to be, it has very cooling properties. You can also give that internally. You can give that in the food and it helps with allergies. And you can also, it also helps with digestive issues. So that's where if you have these plants growing in your garden, or if you drink the tea yourself, so like lavender tea, I drink lavender tea all the time. And it's usually with like chamomile at night, so it helps me relax and I can go to sleep much better. We can actually use that for our pets for the very same reason that we're taking it ourselves. It's just that it's less concentrated. So if you're worried about using essential oils, you can take all the things I'm saying and use that in the actual dried like herbal form. We can use it in tinctures where they take the plants and they extract them out using either alcohol or glycerin tinctures. So there's a lot of different ways to use plants. I mean, we talk about Chinese herbs, too. That's where we're getting the, the thing with using herbs, using plants, using essential oils. The way the reason why it works so well is because it's working synergistically together. We're getting all the different components of the plant that are coming together to have all those different effects that I talked about. So versus a conventional drug, where if I give a non-steroidal like Rimadyl, it's only going to work on a certain pathway, blocking certain receptors. And I'm not, I do not expect a dog to not itch if I give a non-steroidal because it doesn't have that broad spectrum effect, like say giving lavender wood. I've got a chart right in front of me with all the different types of oil that they use on pets or some, some of the oils. And I, I love the fact that we're talking about this and that there is a holistic way and there's so many different things that it treats. We had a, we have a neighbor that has rosemary down the street and they always have a sign there saying cut as much as you want. They have clippers and all that. And then we brought it home one day and we found out that it's actually a soothing for the bath. And so we were we boiled it and put it in our bath. And it was really interesting to 
you know, dive deep into this. And it's so, so this is so fascinating. What you do, Dr. Woodley, is bringing this awareness to everybody and that they can use these to actually make a change in their pet's health. Because we talk about this all the time with pharmaceuticals. They just, they're, they're a surface drug and they're really, they don't get to the root of the problem. So going from here, we talked about, you know, how it's working for your pet. What, you know, where do you want to go from here? Do you want to talk about what's toxic for the pet or why it's toxic? Yeah, let's talk about some of like the the don'ts because this is where, I mean, a lot of people, if you're not familiar with essential oils, you haven't been using them for yourself or your pets, this is where like you don't want to do any harm, right? And so some of the essential oils for dogs specifically that we want to avoid topically and internally. So here's the thing. When you're using essential oils, you're using them from a high quality brand like Animal EO, which is, you know, in the States only, unfortunately. So if we have international people, that's where looking at the company and re- doing your research to make sure that they're transparent. But we can diffuse essential oils around our pets. And so when you're diffusing, what you're doing is you're putting a drop or a couple drops of that essential oil into most likely a water-based diffuser, and you're diffusing it into the air. So it's creating like this, it's not steam, but you see it kind of coming out, looks like steam. And you want to make sure you're diffusing it in an open room. So that means your dog can come and go, especially like your cat. You're not going to like trap them in a small room and turn on the diffuser. There is a time and place for that if you know what you're doing. However getting started, most of these essential oils, including tea tree, um, you can diffuse in an open room. And like I said, I've done that numerous times with my pets, my cats included, and they're completely fine. Um, They can leave the room if they want. The thing is, is we have to be more careful when we're looking to apply them topically. So put them on the skin. We never want to apply it neat. So that means not diluted with a carrier oil. And there are certain essential oils. If you're working with someone, like I use them neat all the time. So I talk about that a lot. But you want to make sure you're working with someone that knows what they're doing and you're diluting it appropriately if you're going that route. So some of the ones to avoid topically and internally with dogs. So if you're just starting, you're not going to use these internally. You don't want to give them in the water, the food, or in a capsule and give it to them. Like that's where working with someone, making sure you're doing that appropriate appropriately is very important so birch your malaleuca so that's your tea tree and wintergreen you don't want to be applying those topically unless you're working with someone and then also you want to use caution if you're using hot oils so keep in mind each plant has a different energy to it so we mentioned peppermint earlier peppermint is very it can be cooling and then we have say like cinnamon, which is hot and warming. Rosemary is another hot oil. Oregano is a hot oil and thyme and clove. So if you're looking at using those, you want to be very careful with using those topically and internally with dogs. So what I always say with those, just use caution. Like you can use them. I use a lot of blends. And so sometimes they'll be in a blend that I'm diffusing. And that's fine. You can diffuse it. And a lot of times you can gain those medicinal properties that you're going for. So like rosemary, rosemary, interesting, you were saying it like relaxes you. I find it very stimulating to me. Like it helps perk me up and get the energy going. And so if you want like more pep in your step, like you can diffuse some of that alongside, you know, if you're looking for opening up the airways, uh, you have a cold or your dog is dealing with something like kennel cough, you can diffuse things like eucalyptus. And that's going to help open up those airways. It provides those medicinal properties, too, that are specific for the lungs and the respiratory tract. But I would say definitely oils to avoid topically internally with dogs. Once again, your Malaleuca tea tree, wintergreen, your hot oils, so oregano, cinnamon, clove, rosemary, and thyme. And so with those that are hot oils, do you just use them as diffuser oils or is there any other thing that you can use them with for your pets i would use it as diffuser oils to start with i i use i've used tea tree oil topically but i think when you're first getting started um i would i would limit that just because unless you're working with someone that you're like if you're diluting it to like 0.25 percent 
you're probably going to be okay as long as you're using a safe tea tree. Now, if you're using a synthetic tea tree, then you're going to r probably run into problems because it's adulterated and who knows what the heck chemicals are in that. Um, but I, I always say for like these types of conversations, especially if there's a lot of beginners, I would just diffuse those if you're looking to to like cleanse the air or things like that. Like one of the um, one of the other companies that I use a lot of is Young Living, and they have a product called Thieves, and I use it honestly for everything. Like it's my cleaner. If I I have like they have a lozenger that I take if I ever get a sore throat. I don't remember the last knock on wood last time I got sick because if I ever have a tickle in my throat, I'm like taking these throat lozenges and like sucking on them hardcore because I don't want to get sick and it's all essential oils and it has things like tea tree and it has cinnamon and things like that. So, but my house cleaner, I clean my floors with it. I clean the toilets with it. I clean the windows with it. I clean the mirrors with it. I clean the sinks with it. It is my, it is my actual house cleaner and I have cats and my cats have never had an issue with it because I dilute it. And yes, I let it dry before they walk on it. Because remember, your pets can lick their paws. But that's the thing. Like, we can use safe brands, the right dilutions, and it's not going to lead to an issue with your pet. And what's the name of the company again? So Young Living. It's a common... So Young Living and doTERRA are two other companies that have been used for years around dogs and cats. And so those are safe companies when you're using them in the right dilutions. So you're not giving it meat. You're not just taking tea tree oil and dumping it on your on your cat. That's not going to go well. Um, so those ones, a couple other companies, too, that you can use to diffuse around your pets, to use topically. I wouldn't necessarily use them internally. Is um, your Rocky Mountain oils, plant therapy. They tend to be a little bit more uh uh, less cost prohibitive um, for people. But like I said, animal EO is actually pretty affordable for an essential oil that's super high quality. And so I'm looking at their site right now. It says, you said you seed the seal. And so they have many different products. So you use all these different products for cleaning, for everything inside your house? Yeah. So they have a human, so they have, well, it's made for humans. They actually have a pet line. So their, their pet line is the animal sense line. And those are already pre-diluted to be used for your pet. So they have some like dental treats too that they've expanded on. They also have an animal sense ointment that you can use for like skin abrasions. And if your pet has like a sore. Um, so I like them because I've used them. That's how I stumbled upon essential oils years and years and years ago. So I've used them for a very long time. And then I'll use other essential oil brands to make sure I have options for people. Um, because, you know, not everyone's going to use that company. But honestly, the Thieves line, we use the Thieves toothpaste. And you can use, here's the thing, you can use their toothpaste as long as there's no xylitol in it. So that's always really important. If you're using the human side of some of these companies, like doTERRA is another one, where I know there's a lot of people who use their Terrazyme for digestive enzymes and to help support digestion. It has essential oils in it, too. You always just have to make sure that there's not xylitol included in those because xylitol is very toxic to animals and can make them very sick and even potentially like die from it. So you do have to be careful when you are using the human versions. But honestly, that was the way for me to get away from your toxic house cleaners. And it cleans better than most things. And it smells like Christmas in my house. Like every day I use it. It's incredible. I love it. Um, and I also know it's keeping my body safe and it's keeping my pet's bodies healthier and safer too. Well, you know, and I just love sharing this and having you talk about this because we're always talking about pets, 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 but the reflection of our pets is us and what are we doing for us? And so the fact that you're talking about what you do for your own self and your own family and your health and what you turn to is so important because then that reflects into your pets and you're just really... I, you know, I honor what you do because you just really believe in what you do. Everything you're looking at, you're always looking at a better, healthier, organic, natural way to look at it. And I think that's so wonderful in today's time, especially the way pet parents are treating their pets these days. They are looking for this. I'm excited that we're talking about this. So Young Living, we've got Young Living and we've got Melissa Shelton. And Melissa is a veterinarian, right? Correct. She's. 
so she's a veterinarian. She knows about dogs and cats and she treats large animals and she has her own aviary. So she's, she is very knowledgeable and she, I mean, now all she does is essential oils for animals. When she was working in a clinic, she was seeing like there are limitations, right? Typically we tend to find the holistic side of things when we come up against the limitation from conventional medicine. And hers was like, we're stuck. Like with conventional medicine, these patients aren't getting better. I need another way. And she started incorporating essential oils. She actually started with Young Living. And then she branched out on her own and created her own company. So that way she could have control over everything. And then that way she could also create a product specifically for pets. Um, so that's why whenever you're starting with essential oils, she's one of the safest companies that you don't have to worry about. If you follow her directions for each bob, like her directions are amazing on her site. And you're probably on it, Michael, yes. for Animal EO, because it gives you the information on how to treat each individual pet. Um, she also has a book um, that, I use a lot for my patients and it's called the animal desk reference and it, it refers to young living essential oils. So, which is nice, but you can also, she talks about your single essential oils too. So if you want to know how to dose lavender or you want to know how to dose vetiver, you can go into those books and figure out, okay, this is how much I would give for my dog or cat. You can get that on Amazon. And that's just a really great resource to have to help guide you and keep your pet safe too. And with her products, I'm looking at, yeah, you're, you're so cute. You're like, you're probably on the website. I am. I love going on the website when I hear these. I know what you're doing. You, you know <laughs> what I'm doing. I'm researching. I'm, I love it. I love it. You're just, you turn me on to so many different things. And this is just another wonderful thing that you've done. And it's like, so when someone goes to her website and they order it, is it, can they just use it straight from the bottle or is that's where the instructions come in and how to dilute it? Yeah. So it'll say either whether you can apply it neat. So neat means undiluted. Usually it's, you're going to be diluting it. Um, there's only a couple oils that I'll have clients apply undiluted usually unless, you know, there's specific cases, but frankincense and copaiba. So C O P A I B A are two of the most common ones. And I know we were going to talk about like, what are my top five oils? Those should be in every single person's like medicine kit, their first aid kit, frankincense and copaiba. And the reason why is that they are so safe when you're using these brands that I'm talking about. And we can use them topically. I use them a lot internally for patients. I know I said not to do that. So <laughs> take that with a grain of salt. But if your pet has cancer, if they have inflammation, if they have osteoarthritis, if they're not doing well, what's really great is that we can use a single drop, like, so kidney disease is so common, especially in cats, and more, like, it's becoming more common, I feel like, in dogs, too, I'm seeing more and more patients with it. You can apply these to where the kidneys are, at the top of the spine, right behind the last rib, that's where the kidneys sit. We can apply a single drop over those kidneys on the skin and it's so helpful for calming them grounding them helping with inflammation helping improve circulation and it makes them feel better and so i love those two essential oils because that combination works for so many different diseases because as we know most diseases are grounded from an inflammatory Path, like process. They start from inflammation. There's always going to be some degree of inflammation present, usually for most diseases. And by using frankincense, by using copaiba, copaiba has been shown to help more than non-steroidals for inflammation over time. And it doesn't lead to kidney or liver issues like non-steroidal can. So it's such a powerful adjunct to any treatment plan whenever there's inflammation. And like I mentioned, it's one of the safest essential oils out there. So I love using it and having people like have it on hand, get it now, like order it while we're talking about this, because honestly, you're going to come across something in your pet's life that you're going to want to use this for. That is so true. I mean, we know that with our products, especially with the 4th of July right now with no more drama. It's like, get it on hand right now, order it because 
4th of July is right here already and you, they panic at the last second and they want it the last second and it's hard to get some things. So I totally agree with that. Yeah. And I was going to, I was going to say too, like not only fireworks, but oh my God, we had like this storm that came through the other day. I thought, honestly, I was working at my desk and I looked out the window and I was like, am I in the middle of a like tornado? <laughs> it just like whipped up and there were like leaves flying by, like trees were kind of going sideways. And I was like, Oh my God, did I not get a memo? And honestly, like my cats were like under the bed and I was like, this is it. We're going to, this is it. And honestly, if <laughs> like, on the days, you know, there's going to be a thunderstorm. Obviously we don't always know, but if you can start diffusing essential oils, obviously I had no clue a tornado was about to whip through my, my area, but like you can diffuse essential oils and help calm your pet. You can apply it to a bandana. You can put it on your pet's neck. You can give them things like we've talked about CBD you can give them other nutraceuticals. You can give them other things like your herbal products that help calm them. And we can use this combination to really help your pet stay sane, stay calm, so that they're not destroying themselves. They're not jumping out of windows. They're not running away. Because that's unfortunately what happens to so many pets during this time of year. Yeah, we know it so well, don't we? Um, so let's get back to, you were talking about frankincense oil, cobaya, what are your top fives? So the ones that I use the most because they cover so many different conditions would be lavender. So that helps with bacterial infections. So like skin disease, it's calming. It helps with anxiety. Um, it helps with inflammation. Like personally, I've used it on burn. I use it on mosquito bites. Right now mosquitoes are really bad up here. Um, so you can use that for mosquito bites. If you have a, a dog that's prone to getting like hives, so you, they go outside and they come back in and they're like covered in hives, you can actually use lavender oil, diluted in coconut oil for that. So lavender, number one, so many uses. And then of course, the other two that I just mentioned, so your copaiba and your frankincense, I would say the fourth one would be Roman chamomile. And it's because that we see so many skin issues. So if you have an itchy pet, they're chewing at their paws, they're getting itchy red skin, they're getting ear infections. Roman chamomile is really helpful for calming that down. But what do most pets at some point in their life get, especially dogs? They get diarrhea, they get GI upset, and chamomile is an antispasmodic. So we can actually use that to calm down gut spasms and help when they have diarrhea. And here's the other thing, it's an anti-anxiety essential oil too. So once again, we're getting a combination of different effects. And then I would say the last one would be vetiver. So B-E-T-I-V-E-R. And vetiver is this amazing oil. And it's kind of, it can be difficult to work with because it tends to be more viscous. It's a little bit thicker. So when you're like trying to get a drop out of the bottle, sometimes it's a little annoying. So I usually say like flick off the, the top um, usually that white little thing that allows only one drop at a time, flick it off and you can always get like a little dropper or syringe to pull it out and create some of your concoctions. That's how I use it um, whenever I'm making it for a patient or using it for myself or my own pet. And the way it works is that it has anti-inflammatory properties. It's really good for anxiety. And you can also, um, you can use it for... Um, so you have your anti-inflammatory, you can use it for anti-anxiety, and it's just super calming. That's what I love about it. So you can use it topically on the skin to help like calm and soothe the skin inflammation. If you have a dog that has severe arthritis, combining it with your copaiba is a great way to increase the amount of anti-inflammatory natural components that we're using. Um, but I really like vetiver, and it's kind of one of those ones that we don't tend to think about all the time. So once again, so the top five, lavender, copaiba, frankincense, Roman chamomile, and vetiver. Well, and we've talked about this too. What about the Roman chamomile? That's a, they could do chamomile tea too, right? That's the thing. Yeah, exactly. Like you don't, this is what I love about it. Like get lavender and chamomile tea. And if you have a pet that has GI upset or they're anxious, this is where you can brew a cup of tea for yourself. And the dog gets like a quarter cup of it put into their food and just mix it in. And you're actually treating them holistically. Remember, it's less concentrated, so it's more dilute, but it's coming from the same plant. 
It's just that essential oils are more concentrated, so we need less of them. Whereas we can use the whole plant form and treat our pets the same way with with that type of plant. So that's a great point. Yeah, I think it's super cool. Um, is there anything else like you you gave us your top five? Are there any that are just hanging on the side that could be a six, seven that you use all the oh, time? Oh, Michael, <laughs> <laughs> you know I have so many, and I could just keep talking. We just opened up a whole a whole world. So okay, so okay, some of the other ones that I would I would say are definitely in the top ten. So myr, so M Y R R H. Myrrh is really, really good for neuropathic pain. So if you have a dog with a bad back and you're, I see pets all the time where they're on five different pain medications and it's like, it's not covering their pain. This is where myrrh is really beneficial at adding in alongside, you know, I'm going to give another one, but your copaiba, your frankincense um, to help reduce that inflammation and provide additional pain relief. One of the cool things about myrrh, I know we're talking about dogs, but I love myrrh because we can actually create toothpaste with myrrh that's safe for cats and it helps reduce inflammation in cat's mouth. We know cats are really prone to things like gingivitis, stomatitis. They can get, you know, really bad dental disease. And we can create toothpaste with baking soda, coconut oil, and a drop of myrrh, and it's safe for your cat to brush their teeth and help avoid some of those dental disease issues. So myrrh is definitely up there. The other one that I was, when I was mentioning the, the pain recipe would be helichrysum. So helichrysum, unfortunately, is not the cheapest essential oil, but it is a powerhouse. And it is so good at reducing pain that I use it when we have severe pain, I'm using it alongside myrrh, I'm using it with copaiba, and I'm using it with frankincense. And it is powerful. And a lot of times those pets, we can get them off of their conventional pain medications. But I'll use it for, so think about it. So pain, what comes with pain? Inflammation. And so if we have skin disease, what do we have? We have inflammation. We have red, irritated skin. So a lot of these essential oils can actually be used for different conditions because we have an underlying inflammatory response as the basis. And we're helping to remove that inflammation treat that pain pathway, down-regulate it, and we help heal the body. Um, so I would definitely say myrrh, helichrysum. Um, oh, right now. So one of, one of the uh, top essential oils for antiviral activity would be Melissa. So Melissa is another one that's not the cheapest. However, for, so I'm, for ourselves, right? Because we're always talking about like a lot of these things I'm saying we actually use for ourselves. And I want to say that really quick because like, because we're talking about dogs, I really want to say we're talking about us because like you just said, we are talking about us because a lot of this stuff you use for yourself. Exactly. And that's the thing, like my husband burns himself, he's getting lavender on his arm. Like I'm pulling out the things. I even put animal sense ointment on like burns. And that's the thing. It doesn't have to, just because it says animal on it, like it better be made for humans. I don't want something that I can't take. And that's really, really important. So using um, your Melissa. So right now, right, we're worried about viruses. We're in like, there's a pandemic that, you know, is going on. And so what can we use to help support our immune systems, help support our pets? What are our pets prone to? Kennel cough. So that's a virus that can be also bacteria, Bordetella bacteria. But also if you have cats, what are cats prone to potentially, especially with stress, herpes virus, Khaleesi virus. And Melissa has really great antiviral properties. So we can use this in a diffuser. We can use it topically. We can actually make like eye rinses with it with a very dilute amount. So typically when we're using them on Cats, we're never going above 0.5% or 1% dilution. What that means is one drop of the essential oil mixed into a teaspoon of a carrier oil. So you're diluting it out. And then we can either apply it topically safe, safely. If you're getting like a big dog. So say you have a 75-pound German Shepherd. So like for my German Shepherd we have been, like I would use a much higher dilution or a higher concentration because he's bigger. He can tolerate more. It's the same with people. But here's the thing, each pet is different. So personal example, like I apply essential oils 
every single day. I use them as like skincare products. I'm applying like frankincense. I use like cypress on my face. Like I use a lot of different essential oils. I'm using them for my, my house call appointments. I'm using calming oils for the pet. And a lot of times I am applying them neat. Now I'm not recommending this for everyone because my husband, on the other hand, he dilutes essential oils and he like gets a burn from it. So each person, each pet can be sensitive. And this is why I always recommend uh, diffusing it first versus jumping right into applying it topically. Now, if you're going to apply something topically, make sure you're following like the dilution guide where we're going 1% starting with like one drop for one teaspoon oil or even less. You could always do one drop for like two teaspoons. That'll be 0.5% dilution. And if you're putting it on your pet, Start with a very small amount on a non-haired region on your pet. So typically on the, the ventral abdomen, so the bottom, like the belly, and small amount, like a tiny little, like your fingertip amount, and wait 24 hours and see if they have an adverse reaction. That would be like redness, irritation. Do they seem bothered by it? And then if they seem fine with it, then yes, now we can use more. But always do that test because my husband's a perfect example. I'm like, what the heck? Like I can apply that topically neat without any dilution and he applies something to like a sore or a lesion and he's diluted it and he gets like redness, irritation, inflammation. So you always want to be careful just knowing that each person, each pet is different. So would that be an allergy? And he's, I mean, we all know if you've been following us long enough, you know, my husband has an autoimmune disease. So we know his immune system is more ramped up than mine. And so I wouldn't necessarily call it an allergy. I'd probably call it a sensitivity. Um, so that's the thing. Like, we don't always know if we have a sensitivity to something. And that's why you have to be careful whenever you're starting something new. Like, I've had a client before apply essential oils topically, and her pet did not like it. And so here's the other thing. If that happens to you, we don't want to dilute it with water. You need more oil. So get your carrier oils and apply that on there. You can use milk products, but water will not, will not help. It will not help at all. It can actually make it worse. So that's really important to know also. If you've applied something topically, your dog's like going frantic. They're red, inflamed. Get more coconut oil and just slather it all over there all over where you applied that essential oil. And usually within, I would say within an hour, two hours, they're going to be okay. They're going to be fine. It just might sting a little bit for them. I know this may be a funny little question, but I thought I would ask, what if they don't have coconut oil? Can they just use vegetable oil? Yes. Yes. Any type of oil. So when I talk about coconut oil, a lot of people have coconut oil, but this would be like olive oil. If you've only got canola oil for one, make sure you check out all my like nutritional posts about canola oil. However, um, you can use any type of cooking oil. You want oil. That's the biggest thing because that's what's going to extract out that es the essential oil will bind with that. And so where you're using water, it's not necessarily going, it's not going to do anything. It's not going to bind to that essential oil and remove it. So use whatever you have in that situation. Like this is, it's not necessarily an emergency, but it can feel like an emergency and you just need to get that essential oil off your pet. Yeah, definitely. You know, and I was just thinking too, it's like, you know, this is a way of life, just like what you're talking about earlier about it's just not just for your pets, it's for us as well. And you do this every single day for yourself. And so everybody in the room, I am, I encourage you to look for yourself as well when we're talking about these subjects, because there's so much here to learn. I've learned so much from Dr. Katie and my house is changing every day because of her. Um, so what else do we want to know about oils? You got to, I think you got to nine oils and you said top 10. Yes. Okay. You're <laughs> holding me accountable here. Yes. Um, so let's think about, okay. So a lot of times, let's see. So we talked about lavender, copaiba, frankincense, Roman chamomile, vetiver, frankincense, polychrysum, your myrrh. Um, Melissa. Oh, another one. Here we go. Okay. <laughs> what do we want to repel? Fleas and ticks, mosquitoes. So lemongrass. Lemongrass is actually a really great essential oil that you can apply topically for dermatitis. And it also, so, okay, here's, 
here's my disclaimer. I'm being honest with everyone here. <laughs> it's supposed to repel mosquitoes. But here's the thing. I got a lemongrass plant to repel mosquitoes. So they're super horrible in Fort Collins. They live in it. Every time I water it, they come out of it. And so <laughs> it's supposed to repel them. So I'm saying, here's my disclaimer. Do not rely only on lemongrass to repel mosquitoes and insects um, because they live it. Maybe I just have mutant mosquitoes, but you can use it also for helping with dermatitis. So another great essential oil recipe. So say your pet has like a little bit of skin irritation, like their belly, they've got a little bit of redness. What can you use? You can use a drop of lemongrass. You can use a drop of myrrh. So remember, myrrh is good for pain, but it also helps reduce inflammation. And keep in mind, those carrier oils are also really, we can use them for their medicinal properties. So for allergies, inflammation, inflamed skin, a lot of times I'm reaching for calendula oil. Calendula is really good at reducing inflammation and it has antihistamine properties. So you can use that as your carrier oil. You can also apply colloidal silver to these mixtures for an extra antibacterial property. And sometimes I'll add in things like aloe vera gel because aloe vera gel is very soothing to the skin. So you can apply that to like red irritated paws. You can apply it to the red irritated skin on like the belly or if they have like a little bit of a hot spot. So keep in mind, we don't just have to use coconut oil. We can use things like um, your calendula oil. We can use things like olive oil. We can use things like, yeah, I always say it wrong. So if I screw up this pronunciation, I apologize, but Yehoba oil, um, that can be very soothing also for the skin too. So you can always rotate the different types of uh, carrier oils that you're you're diluting your essential oils with. Did that get me to 10, Michael? I think you made to 10, yes. We can even add the oils there and get you past 10. Dr. Katie, so everything that we've talked about so far, you kind of started in like the don'ts, the don'ts, the don'ts. Is there any really big don't that everybody should always be aware of? Yeah, don't walk into a store and just buy the essential oil like when you see it. Like I see this, I see it all the time. Or don't go to Amazon and just buy the essential oil. There's so many counterfeit essential oils online. Here's the thing, like it's been shown numerous times how easy it is to like pop off the top pour out the essential oil. And then what people will do, unfortunately, is they'll pour, they'll put in a synthetic cheap essential oil that's like the perf the perfume grade, which is adulterated and going to cause health issues for your pet. So yes, it might be cheaper, but if we're going, like if essential oils are too costly, then use the tea. Use those other things that we talked about where you're using the same plant. It might not be as concentrated, but it'll be safer for your pet. So don't walk into like a normal store. I see like, you know, I walk into like Bed Bath & Beyond and it's like the oil sitting right there. And you're like, oh, she talked about oils. Let me get those. Don't do it. <laughs> it won't end well. So you want to be using good quality brands. You can't necessarily rely on brands that just stay organic either. And I hate saying that, it's but it's the truth. Like just because they say organic doesn't necessarily mean they sourced it from appropriate places. And did they do the testing? There's a lot of different factors that go into that. So keep that in mind when you're looking at essential oils. Is there anything that we haven't talked about that you think we should talk about that we haven't covered? It's a great question. You know, I think there's so many, I mean, I've, I've done like, I have three hours of essential oils and I have a VIP natural pet parent club and so we've talked, I've talked a lot about the different conditions and how to use essential oils. Um, so I think the biggest thing is, is keep in mind that when you're treating conditions, it's not, you don't just have to use essential oils. We can combine them with other things. So when I talk about GI upset, it's not just that we're using essential oils that are helping to calm things down. So using things like ginger or peppermint or even vetiver. But we can also, you want to make sure that we're feeding or fasting them for 12 to 24 hours. We're adding in things that are going to support GI health, things like digestive enzymes, slippery elm to calm inflammation. Um, so I want people to remember that. Like essential oils are very, very powerful, but I tend to combine them with a lot of different natural remedies 
because we'll heal the condition a lot faster. But if you're looking at, I don't want to use antibiotics, I don't want to use pain medications, I would honestly say other than like Chinese herbs are very powerful also. Um, and I, I would say I'm typically using those alongside essential oils a lot of times, but your essential oils would be like the next go-to for your, your powerhouses. What's going to achieve the fastest result and the best result um, if we don't want to use conventional drugs? And I would say essential oils. It's just that a lot of people don't know how to use them appropriately. And that's why they get a lot of flack for being dangerous. And they're not when you use them appropriately. Is there a place that you go to? Is there a chart that people can go and see the list of oils and um, what they help with? So I've done a lot of learning for myself from like books that I mentioned and also webinars um, from other like holistic vets that use essential oils. Um, I do have videos on using essential oils safely um, on my YouTube site. And then um, I think I also have some blog posts. It's hard to remember at the naturalpetdoctor.com. Um, but I would go to, there's information on Young Living. There's information on, I think, Dr. Melissa Shelton, too, to, on how to use essential oils. So those are good starting places. Um, I know people can also take, like, aromatherapy classes, from the human side. Um, so it's, there's, there's information out there. It can be a little bit harder to find. Um, animal, e, I think it's animal, no, not animal EO. The essential oil vet is another person that you can follow. So da Dr. Janet Rourke, she's another veterinarian that does essential oils. She uses doTERRA. So um, she doesn't recommend any other essential oils but she also has a lot of information on how to use them safely. So those would be a couple other resources I would recommend for people. What about a tip for us for humans? What would be our first baby step in doing essential oils for ourselves? So start diffusing. I love my diffuser. It's just like behind, it's in my office and I'll just, you know, put in different blends. Like, um, I think honestly, like you can't go wrong when you're using essential oils for yourself. And when you're using it as a, in a diffuser, you can't go wrong if you're using those good brands that we talked about for your pets. So if your pets are hanging out with you while you're working in your office and you're just diffusing it, you're going to be fine. So I think start using that. Like I don't use perfume anymore because it gives me a headache and I diffuse essential oils. And honestly, people are like, wow, you smell so good. I'm like, thank you. I showered today. But <laughs> in reality, I use essential oils. And so... That's where you can start replacing your artificial fragrances with essential oils. We talked about like the cleaning products, using a feed cleaner from Young Living. You don't have to use Young Living. This isn't a plug for Young Living. It's just that I absolutely love their cleaning products and like their toothpaste. And I will, I will never go back to a different company because I love it. So I think just get started. And once you start getting comfortable with it, it becomes a little bit easier and you know, like the company's good, you feel good while you're doing it, your pets, there's no harm to them and that'll make you more comfortable moving forward with it. So it's really something that you can do for your pets and yourself at the same time. Oh yeah, everyone benefits. You're, you're breathing it in. And honestly, I would say, I would have to say the reason why I never get sick, once again, knock on wood, can't remember the last time I got sick is because I use essential oils so frequently in my life and it supports my immune system. It, it, it's just honestly, essential oils are just amazing. And when we use them correctly and appropriately for us and for our pets. Well, we're at the top of the hour, Dr. Katie, thank you so much for being here. I did have one more question, but I'll save it for next time. Anything that you want to close out the room with? You can always ask me, Michael. You know I love sharing if you want. Okay, I'm going to ask you. So what was that moment that turned you on to essential oils? What what gave you that pivot? Was it the situation with your husband and going through all that you grew through with him? Or was there another moment that you were like, wait a second, there's more to this? It, what's funny is that it, essential oils were actually the first step in my holistic path. So for anyone that's not familiar with my story, my husband developed an autoimmune disease and 
so ulcerative colitis specifically, about six months after moving back to the state. I went to vet school in New Zealand, worked there for a couple of years, and brought him back. He's actually from New Zealand. And when we were looking for other alternatives to conventional medicine, essential oils was one of the first things that came up. And I said, we're going there. And so we've actually been using essential oils with him and for gut health since, oh gosh, 2013. That's how long I've been using essential oils for. And it's honestly, I'm so thankful that I found it because it's helped me. It gives me other alternatives. Like I mentioned, it's safe for my pets. I use it for my patients. And really like it's given me alternatives for cats. Like if you have a cat, like, giving them Chinese herbal medicine, a lot of cats won't take Chinese herbal medicine. Like that's just unfortunately a fact. So a lot of times they won't take anything, but especially if they have skin disease, they have kidney disease, I can have pet parents apply essential oils to them topically. And we can integrate it into like massage therapy and other modalities that are calming and soothing. And it has been a game changer for me in treating my patients. And it's been so amazing. So I honestly, I, as Michael already knows, and if you guys have been listening in on our conversations these past few weeks, like it sucks that my husband developed an autoimmune disease, but it led me to this entire world of medicine that's changed my entire life and actually led me to develop the natural pet doctor. So I'm so grateful that I get to share the information and the knowledge with other pet parents to help their pets thrive so that they can hopefully avoid disease. So hopefully you can avoid disease because I don't want to see anyone else develop an autoimmune disease in the human world because it's a game changer. Um, so I, I hope if you're not familiar with essential oils, I hope you kind of start dabbling, you start becoming more familiar with it. Um, follow me on The Natural Pet Doctor on Instagram, Facebook. You can go to our website, thenaturalpetdoctor.com, and also our YouTube video because there's lots of information and resources that we have there. And if you need more in-depth information, send me a direct message. I can always share that VIP club that we have where we have a lot of information on the essential oils. Yeah, she's got such incredible information on her website and the naturalpetdoctor.com. And on YouTube, I was like looking at all your different videos. So there's so much information there, and I just love that. So with that... Um, well, I love that, Dr. Katie. That's what the magic of the world is, is we stumble upon these things when we least expect them. And next thing you know, they change our lives and it's changed your lives, your husband's life, and it's changing people's lives and their pets' lives. And I think it's so important that we do have these conversations. And I'm so excited that I get to do them with you, Dr. Katie. I know, Michael. I'm so <laughs> grateful that you found me and like kept hounding me because this is amazing and that you're changing people's people's lives by bringing us all together and helping us share the information that's so needed in this world we're right here and what's so beautiful is like we're everybody's willing just to give their information just turn people on to people they, i always say we don't know what we don't know and this is a new place for us to learn and just really listen i always say from the horse's mouth because we're listening from everybody so i'm so happy that everybody else gets to learn as well so i'm so blessed i feel blessed dr katie so thank you very much for being here it's um such a pleasure yeah thank you michael i feel blessed too so definitely mutual and thanks everyone for being here and learning and taking time out of your friday evening or whatever time it is wherever